as Johnny said, is a receptive activity. You have to receive the words, understand as you consume them to put together the story in your head. These masterminds are all about getting outside of your comfort zone, getting some travel, getting some experience in. I know we hear a lot from the guys on program that they feel they're boring, they feel they're not interesting. And we've tried to put together these trips to allow for those experiences that create stories, that create the life that you want to live. I think there's certainly an illusion being forced upon all of us with social media with everyone living their best lives. So it's easy to feel that you're boring. However, it's very easy to get yourself out of that as well. Okay? Book yourself a trip. Come on out to a beautiful place that you've never been before and explore. And of course, these places make it very easy for you to explore with, with, with trips and tours and experiences that they have already laid out for you. All you have to do is inquire. time in Mexico yeah what are you thinking I'm liking it nice warm weather beautiful beautiful scenery all around Sean's pretty handsome too I do what I can <laughs> yeah we went into the jungle found some freshwater cenotes we ATV'd and terrifyingly enough we zip line. yeah how'd you like that uh, that was definitely facing our fears. Facing our fears. Uh, this is the Heights edition. Johnny's going upside down. No. no. Can you see the pure terror on our faces? A little bit. Okay, yeah. A little bit. No, I'm worried about my flip flops. I got to. You don't worry about that. Famous last word. <laughs> Above the canopy, Johnny actually got to see a monkey. Yeah, yeah. I faced my fear of heights, and uh, I'm not quite sure I survived it. <laughs> I think I needed more exposure therapy to break through. Now, logically, you know, looking at the rigging apparatus and everything else, I know that I'm safe. I've been repelling before. However, I've never ziplined before, and there is a certain mental switch. We had to climb some pretty rickety stairs get up there and that was the most terrifying part well you know the construction of them was built to sway with the wind but it certainly didn't allow you to feel very safe no and we had to strap in for safety reasons but the reason we strapped in for safety reasons also led to more of my fear yeah because I was like oh wow this is actually pretty scary if we need a safety harness to be up here yeah now I only completed three of the lines faced my fears, but not as much as Johnny did. You did seven. Yes, I've worked through 
screw the I don't think my clutching of the ropes had ever ceased even on all those seven. I enjoyed it spectacularly. I'd probably do it again, but it was I was certainly fearful. I don't think I would do it again. <laughs> So I can't say I completely conquered my fear, but I'm happy that I got up there and at least got to try it. What was your favorite part of the trip, Johnny? I think, along with everybody, I think the snow days was, was probably the best. I can't help that I miss you now. Something we don't really get to see, at least I've never got to see in, in America and California. And we did an outdoor one that was, you could argue, a Beverly Hillbilly style, a great cement <laughs> pond. It was a big natural pond. Uh, beautiful, cold water. It was fantastic. Crystal clear, fresh water, swimming holes, and caves, essentially. Yeah, the second one was the caves. Um, so. which was, that had its own limits of terror uh, to be in it, the, the claustrophobia. Uh, but it was, the water was cool and it was certainly beautiful. And that I would certainly do again. Well, we also heard it, that a jaguar, jaguar, yeah, a jaguar lives in one of the cenotes. He doesn't drink much stuff. Uh, and we also found out that a crocodile lives in another cenote. So yeah. uh, there was a little bit of danger involved, nothing like the zip lining. Yeah, that's for sure. But I enjoyed it. It was wonderful. And we always love finding locals to take us around. We were very fortunate enough to have found Alejandro on Airbnb Experiences. He took us to the Hidden Cenote, and he also took us on a taco tour, which was fantastic because we got to try some food that we never would have had. Taco style, number three. What's your number of tacos, Johnny? My favorite number is all of the tacos. That's not a number. Uh, infinity tacos. We'll go with six. <laughs> they're going to be having because a lot of times uh, it's delicious up, yeah. I mean no doubt about it and he was able to navigate the menu which Johnny and yeah. I would have struggled with That's... for sure and a lot of these stands we never would have stopped at in the first place the last thing I want to talk about with these trips that is so much fun is just an opportunity to get out in nature we talk a lot about working on our listening skills and trying to be better in conversations but we don't realize how much technology is influencing our behaviors. Well, how many times throughout the week in your busy life do you feel the need to put down your computer and go outside for a bit? And, and if you average out that time throughout the week, what do you got? Maybe five hours that you, you weren't in front of a screen? And that's, it's very easy to get to that point. But how about spending close to a week outside your screen and in nature and the sights and the sounds that go with it? It's refreshing and it allows you to decompress from technology that is not strengthening our social skills it allowed for us to get into the jungle where there was limited to no service at all yeah and have great conversations at dinner and be fully present i know a lot of us are working on being more present being more in the moment it's hard to do that when you have cell phone service getting outside of your comfort zone traveling provides that opportunity to strengthen your listening skills and what goes on with listening skills? It's certainly how you're consuming information and reading is one of those. It helps you look at things, put words together, formulate them in your head, and then, and, and then make them comprehensible. And reading strengthens your vocabulary, which makes you a better listener. So the second tip for listening and getting better at listening is to read more. Reading, as Johnny said, is a receptive 
activity. You have to receive the words, understand as you consume them to put together the story in your head. And if you have the time to just sit outside, enjoy the sun, have the wind hitting on you, and pull out a good book. It's a, it's a wonderful way, as we are saying, and this technology is atrophying all of these skills. So we certainly don't want reading to go by the wayside. And you're probably thinking, well, I read tons of blogs. This is not the same as pulling out a book and just allowing your imagination to just run off and build a story and pictures inside. We're taking off. Hope you guys have a great week. See you guys.